Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am just going to be sharing a quick August library haul. Um, I did library hauls a little bit in the beginning of my channel and I got away from doing them, but I really enjoyed doing them so I want to kind of bring it back. The majority of the books that we got for this week are either authored or illustrated by Oliver Jeffers because we're going to be doing an artist study on Oliver Jeffers. So, the very first book I got is The Terrible Thing That Happened to Barnaby Brockett. There's nothing unusual about the Brockets. Boring, respectable, and proud of it. They turn up their noses at anyone strange or different. But from the moment Barnaby Brockett comes into the world, he defies the laws of gravity and floats. Desperate to please his parents, Barnaby does his best to keep both feet on the ground. But he just can't do it. Um, I really love Oliver Jeffers. I adore his imagination, so I'm excited to read this with my oldest. The next one I got is another one that I'm going to be reading with my oldest. It's The Boy in the Striped Pajamas. I watched this movie a few years ago, um, and I, I know you're thinking, like, what are you about to read to your child? But... Um, I really like stories for this reason. I think that he is well within the age that we can open this book up, read through the story, and just um, start some conversations about some maybe not so comfortable things. But I'm excited to read this with him, and you guys will see how it goes, I guess. The next book I got, I just recheck this out from the library because we weren't quite finished with it. It's just the Who is Neil Armstrong. We are finishing up our space unit and we just have a few more pages left in this book so we're just going to finish that up. Um, the next one I got is Oliver Jeffers, The Heart and the Bottle. Once there was a girl whose life was filled with all the wonder of the world around her. Then one day something occurred that caused the girl to take her heart and put it in a safe place. However, after that it seemed that more things were empty than before. Would she know when and how to get her heart back? You guys, the imagination inside of his stories is amazing. I'll probably say that about eight more times. The next one I got, Love, Love, Love. This is Once Upon an Alphabet. It's short stories for all of the letters of the alphabet. Um, I actually think I may end up doing a separate video on this book just because I think it's so amazing. I guess you could kind of create your own curriculum, like preschool um, curriculum using this book. Uh, I love it so much. The stories are so sweet, short and sweet, and I just love it so much. So I'm excited to share this with all of them. The next one I got is The Great Paper Caper. Um, again, another super imaginative story. It just says, There once was a forest where everyone went about their business. All was well until the strangest things started happening. Without warning, branches began disappearing from trees. Something will have to be done, everyone agrees. And a full-scale investigation is launched. Witnesses are interviewed. Clues are gathered. Paw prints are dusted. Who is the culprit? And why are there paper airplanes littering the forest floor? Super exciting excited to share this with them as well. Um, I see a lot of paper airplanes being made and um, stretched out all over the house and I'm kind of excited about it. <laughs> So the next one I got is Imaginary Fred. You've probably seen this one um, before, but did you know that if the conditions are just right and if you add a little electricity or magic or luck, that an imaginary friend might appear just when you need one. An imaginary friend like Fred. Fred is the best imaginary friend you could ever hope for, but no matter how hard he tries, the same thing always happens. His friend finds a real friend in the real world, and Fred fades away, bit by bit, wanting to be wished for again. Then one day a boy called Sam wishes for a friend, and Fred appears. For a while everything is perfect, but what about the day when Sam finds a real friend? Could it be that this time something magical might happen? The next one I got is A Child of Books. I just love the inside flap of this book. It's amazing. Um, it's a little girl, a child of books, sails her raft across the sea of words and arrives at the house of a young boy. She invites him to go away with her on an adventure into the world of stories, where with only a little imagination, anything at all can happen. In this extraordinary ode to the power and promise of storytelling. 
You guys, I'm gonna love that book for sure. The next one I got is Stuck. It all began when Floyd got his kite stuck in a tree. The trouble really began when he threw a shoe up to knock the kite loose. And that got stuck too, followed by a ladder, a bucket of paint, the kitchen sink, an orangutan, and a whale who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And that was just the start of things. If only Floyd could think of an idea to sort this out once and for all. So cute, so imaginative, so excited to read it to them. The next three that I got were more appropriate for my four-year-old. I just picked up the Hueys in It Wasn't Me. The thing about the Hueys was that most of the time they got along, but every so often they didn't. And it was one of those times that Gillespie came across a bit of an argument. What are we fighting for? He asked. I'm excited to read this one to them because it's so appropriate right now. I've been having so many issues with them arguing and bickering lately that I'm sure that that'll probably help a little bit. The Hueys in What's the Opposite? What's the opposite of the beginning? Um, okay, let's try an easier one. What's the opposite of up? Down. It is! <laughs> Short and sweet, super fun. The last board book I got is the Crayons Book of Colors, so that'll just be short and sweet and fun to share. The next book that I got was A Ticket Around the World. I've had this book pinned on Pinterest for a while. If you were traveling the world with me, would you get covered in the colors in the Indian celebration of Holi? Try a delicious plate of seswa in Botswana. Cuddle koalas in the branches of an Australian eucalyptus tree. All this and lots more. This book is your ticket around the world. Excited to read that to them. And I, I probably will purchase that one as well. The next one I got is The Most Magnificent Thing. This one's been pinned on my Pinterest board as well. One day, a little girl has a wonderful idea. With the help of her canine assistant, she is going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look. She knows just how it will work. Easy peasy, but making the most magnificent thing turns out to be harder than she thinks. She measures, hammers, fastens, and adjusts again and again, but the thing just keeps turning out wrong. If only the thing would just work. I'm going to love reading that to them. The next thing I got was the human machine um this is just one that i picked up because we're getting ready to start our body unit and it looks pretty cool um so i'm gathering resources now for um putting together the body unit the next um set of books that i got were more for our homeschool studio um we've been getting into the process of engineering and um, what do you do with an idea so these were perfect for that and i'm sure you've probably seen them already but the first one i got is ada twist scientist so, why are there pointy things stuck in a rose? Why are there hairs up inside of your nose? Ada Twist's head is full of questions like her classmates Iggy and Rosie. Ada has always been endlessly curious, but when her fact-finding missions and elaborate scientific experiments go too far, her frazzled parents banish her to the thinking chair. Will all that thinking change Ada's mind? The next one I got is Rosie Revere Engineer. I'm sure you've seen this one too. This is the story of Rosie Revere who dreamed of becoming a great engineer. Shy Rosie constructs great inventions from odds and ends, hot dog dispensers, helium pans, python repelling cheese hats. Rosie's gizmos would astound if ever she let anyone see them. Afraid of failure, she hides them away under her bed until a fateful visit from her great-great-great-aunt Rose shows her a first flop isn't something to fear, it's something to celebrate. I love books that really help you teach. You guys know that my oldest is for sure a builder and a creator. Um, so this will be a nice one to help him deal and manage his emotions when he does something that doesn't quite turn out how he wanted. The next one I got is what do you do with a problem? What do you do with a problem, especially one that follows you around and doesn't seem to be going away? Do you worry about it, ignore it? Do you run and hide from it? This is a story of a persistent problem and the child who isn't so sure what to make of it. The longer the problem is avoided, the bigger it seems to get. The next one, what do you do with an idea? Especially an idea that's different or daring or just a little wild. 
Do you hide it, walk away from it? Do you pretend it isn't yours? This is the story of one brilliant idea and the child who helps bring it into the world. As the child's confidence grows, so does the idea itself. The last one that I got is Papa's Mechanical Fish. I really thought that this story was really cute. This just says click, clankety, bang, thump, whir. That's the sound of Papa at work. Although he is an inventor, he has never made anything that works perfectly because he hasn't yet found a truly fantastic idea. Then he takes his family fishing on Lake Michigan and his daughter Verena asks, have you ever wondered what it's like to be a fish? And Papa is off to his workshop. A few weeks later, he opens the door to reveal an underwater vessel. It is so small he barely fits inside. It has a tube sticking out the top so he can breathe. It has a pole sticking out the bottom so he can push himself along the lake floor. But will it work? <laughs> I love this one so much as all the others. I really like finding gems inside of the library. I like being able to read through the stories first before I decide whether or not we're going to purchase them and add them to our library. But anyway, um, I just wanted to share a little bit of what was in our library bin. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, but I really like to keep logs of what we're finding, the goodies that we're finding at the library. So if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed if you haven't already and I will see you in our next video.